Chief of Police for the City of Paris. I want to let you know that after we speak here today, um, there will be a, an opportunity to ask some questions of each of the speakers. Um, first of all, I'm very saddened to report on such a heartbreaking case. I'd like to remind you of some of the facts of how this investigation was brought to our attention. On Sunday, January 14, 2018, um, just before 6 o'clock in the morning, a 17-year-old girl called 911 from a deactivated cell phone and reported that her siblings were being held against their will and some were chained. Deputies responded, met with that 17-year-old nearby, and she explained that she had escaped through a window uh, from, from that residence. The 17-year-old also showed some photos uh, that led the deputies to believe that the information she was provided was accurate. Deputies and a supervisor responded to that location, conducted a welfare check to check on the additional siblings in that home. There were a total of 13 siblings located, six of which were under the age of 18. Um, deputies, when they arrived inside the house, they noticed that the children were malnourished, it was uh, very dirty, and the conditions were horrific. The parents and children, biological parents and children, were taken to the Paris Sheriff's Station for further investigation. AMR and CAL FIRE also responded to check on the uh, children, their well-being, all the siblings, and our uh, Child Protective Services and Adult Protective Services were also uh, dispatched to our location to assist us with the investigation. During the investigation, we discovered that the parents and children have lived in the city of Paris since approximately 2014. They were homeschooled um, at that residence. There is no indication that there were any other uh, students or children residing in that residence. However, at this time, the investigation is still ongoing, so we're not going to rule anything out. Um, I wish I could come to you today with information that would explain why this happened. Um, but we do need to acknowledge the courage of the young girl who escaped from that residence to bring attention so they could get the help that they so needed. As I indicated earlier, we're working with Child Protective Services, Adult Protective Services, and medical professionals to ensure that the victims get the help that they need. With that being said, I would now like to introduce the Mayor of the City of Paris, Michael Vargas. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming out. I can truly say that I'm devastated at this act of cruelty and heartfelt for the victims. I can't begin to imagine the pain and suffering that they have endured. I'm very grateful for our police department for their swift response and acting upon this, receiving this information of this incident. And I have faith that uh, our investigators will complete a thorough investigation. This is a very happy and tight, hardworking family community, and I know I speak on behalf of the residents of Paris, that our thoughts and prayers are with the victims as they endure the next few weeks that are coming up. And I thank everybody behind me for helping out in this investigation. Thank you. On behalf of the Department of Public Social Services, I want to acknowledge that we are actively working closely and cooperatively with the Sheriff's Department on this investigation. Our foremost concern at this time is the health and well-being of all of the children, and we will be seeking court authorization to provide oversight and care for the children, including the adult children, to the extent that that's necessary. I am immensely grateful for the young child being willing to make that call to 911. Otherwise, we would not have had the opportunity to intervene. And we want to highlight the importance uh, the community plays in providing us with information about abuse and neglect. And we encourage anyone in the community to call our hotlines or call law enforcement whenever they have a concern about abuse or neglect, whether it is uh, impacting a child, a disabled adult, or a senior. 
Thank you. Your name? Your name? I'm Susan Von Zabern, Director of the Department of Public Social Services. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dr. Sophia Grant. I'm the Medical Director of the Child Abuse Unit at Riverside University Health System. In general, when uh, caring for children such as these, uh, the immediate need would be to uh, address the concerns that we have about their health and well-being. Uh, they would require stabilization, and in cases of starvation, we would have to uh, slowly uh, start to feed them to uh, avoid any problems that refeeding may cause. In addition to the medical needs, we would also do assessments, whether it be uh, CT scans, x-rays, or any type of diagnostic studies to uh, assure that nothing else is going on. Uh, the long-term needs of these kids are going to be uh, the psychological and psychiatric needs um, um, due to the prolonged periods of um, starvation mal uh, and maltreatment. Um, thank you. Good morning. My name is uh, Mark Uffer. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Corona Regional Medical Center in, in Corona. Um, we have um, seven of the adults. Um, it's hard to think of them as adults when you first see them because they're, they're small and it's very clear that they're um, malnutrition. Uh, we've done some lab work on them. We can't tell you a lot because of HIPAA uh, other than we, they're, they're stable. Um, they're being fed. Uh, um, to try to refeed, as was discussed, um, they're um, comfortable and they're in a very safe and secure environment. And I think that's the most important thing for them right now. Uh, we want to work closely with all the uh, different agencies in the county uh, to make sure that they're um, treated appropriately. Um, and at this point, uh, I think they're stable and safe and uh, we want to respect their privacy. They've gone through a very traumatic ordeal. Um, I can tell you that they're they're very uh, friendly, they're um, they're very cooperative, and I believe that they're hopeful that life will get better for them uh, after this event. So thank you very much. And with that, we'll be prepared to answer some uh, questions. Yes, sir. I wanted two, two questions. The first one, you sort of hinted. I just want to make sure: is there is the parents? When you went in there, and I got her arrested, did they try to explain what was going on? Did they put up any uh, resistance? Uh, were they welcome to you? That's my first question. Okay. Um, in regards to your first question, um, the I can't get into the specific details of the conversation, but it seemed that the mother was perplexed as to why we were uh, at, at that residence. Had you had prior contact with them uh, in the past, law enforcement? No, sir. We had no prior contacts um, at that residence regarding um, uh, any allegations of, of uh, child abuse or neglect. Or anything else? What about calls for service? Regarding anything else, we had no other contacts at that residence. Captain, I want to follow up on that one thing, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. How long Go ahead. I just, yeah, I just I wanted to also ask. The reception you received from the children, were they excited to see you? Were they happy? And we were also, I think from you, your department, we got indications that they said to you that they were hungry, they wanted food. Can you go into the reception that you received from the children? I don't have a description to provide to you regarding the specific reception, but the children were in fact fed. Yes, sir. Um, how many of them were indeed shackled? I mean, I gather that not all of them were shackled. A lot of the neighbors say the adults actually would come outside. There are at least a couple that were uh, found uh, shackled in that condition. I don't have that exact amount. At least so, a couple. Captain Phillips. Um, yes. I spoke to the family last night, David uh, Turpin's parents, and they said that this seemed like a happy family, but they also said that they were a very religious family. They taught their kids the Bible. They actually instructed them to memorize large sections of it. Is there anything having to do with religion? Could religion have caused this? Is it some sort of cult or an option of religion that made them treat their children like this? As of right now, I have no information regarding any uh, religious organization associated, associated with this matter. 
But again, we're still in the very early stages of this investigation, and our detective bureau is conducting a meticulous and detailed uh, investigation. Yes, ma'am. You, you said the conditions were horrific. Do you have any specifics about what you actually saw in the house? Some of our staff described that there was uh, it was uh, there was a very foul smell inside the residence. Um, it was extremely dirty, and uh, as we reported uh, previously, uh, many of the children were malnourished. Were they Captain, only found in bedrooms, Captain. or were they also found in the garage, any other places that maybe are not suitable for bedrooms? Yeah, I don't have the information of where they were located specifically. Any sense of how long they were down there for, or how long they had been held captive? No, sir. I don't have that information. But again, um, it's very early on in our investigation, and those are questions that we want to get but answered. We want to, that we want to get answered as well. Sir, in yesterday's press conference, you might have you said, in yesterday's press conference, you noted that they have been physically and psychologically abused decades. What gives you that indication? Well, again, as part of our investigation, interviews have been conducted in this matter. I can't get, since it's an ongoing case and we're preparing our case to be submitted to the Riverside County District Attorney's Office for filing, um, I can't get into these specific statements, um, but that information was included in that press release. Well, Captain, did, did the family, where did they live before here, like te uh, Texas or West Virginia, and are you checking into whether they fled trouble in their previous uh, residences? The information that we have is that they previously lived for a period of time in the city of Marietta, and there is information that they previously lived uh, in the state of Texas. And that's additional information that we are following up on as part of our investigation to get to the bottom of that as well. Captain, a yes. difficult topic because they have some are minors, but is there any indication of sexual abuse? Right now, we don't have any information to indicate that, but again, very early on in our investigation, we have substantial amount of interviews still to, to conduct, um, so we hope to get to the bottom of that, of that as well. Yes, sir. Captain, you, 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 the press release that you said that, you said that the children were, were tortured. Can you describe how they were tortured? Well, again, I can't get into the specifics of that, but if you can imagine um, being 17 years old and appearing to be a 10-year-old, um, being chained to a bed, um, being malnourished and um, um, injuries associated with that, um, I would call that torture. Were they victims of abuse? Were they victims of abuse? Were they beaten by the parents? Well, again, those are some of the things that we are still investigating, and part of that ongoing investigation, I can't release all those details at this time. When were the cases chained to a bed? Upon entering the room, did the deputies actually find children chained to a bed? Describe the situation. Yes, the yes. In, in regards to uh, when deputies went in, there were, how many people did we have? There were three individuals that were uh, chained to some type of furniture inside the residence. Can you confirm that the, um, both of the adults that you call in the father and the mother are the biological parents of all of the children? And the second question is, did any other agencies have contact with the home? They were homeschooled with any education officials who followed up? Neighbors did code enforcement was out there? Did they ever find anything unusual? Uh, again, we had no call history at that residence. Uh, to indicate that this type of activity was occurring there. Without what about the blood relatives? Are they all blood? To the two parents? Are they all the, those the biological parents? From, from what we know right now, they are the biological parents of all of the children. You mentioned that the mother seemed to be confused as to why you guys were questioning her as to what was going on. Um, what was the father's reaction to the deputy? I don't have that reaction for you today. Can you explain again why you consider it torture? Just go through what you saw that makes you in your mind think it was torture. Can you do that again for us, please? Well, again, if, if you can imagine when you have adults who appear that they're, they're children and they're so mal, malnourished um, and, and they're not being fed and they're living in these uh, uh, filthy, uh, dirty conditions, um, uh, that's going to take its toll. Captain Bellows, is there any indication or have you been able to understand why none of the kids came forward earlier? Uh, if they were able to leave, apparently they had cars, why didn't they plot an escape or go to the authorities sooner? Well, that's a good question, but one, as I indicated earlier, um, I appreciate the courage that this uh, juvenile had to escape that house and get out there and report this to law enforcement. Can you tell you what precipitated that particular yeah, can and you tell us more day? about that? I don't have uh, any information regarding Does that. I'll take two more questions. Yes, sir. Uh, you said that the mother was perplexed. Um, 
Are we looking at mental illness as a possible reason for this? There's no indication of mental illness at this time. One more question. Can you, can you also speak to the fact that it looks like the family had a much more uh, present social media presence, and then they sort of disappeared off of that. Does it seem, based on the conversations you're having with them, that there seemed to be a moment that changed for this family when things started to go unravel? I can't make any conclusion regarding that. Um, I've seen the Facebook uh, posts like many of you have, um, so I can't come to a conclusion or indicate if, if something changed or what uh, came to uh, the, uh, the, the juvenile escaping that particular night. Um, but again, we're so glad that um, she had the courage to do so, and we're going to uh, continue this investigation. We're going to conduct a meticulous investigation, and we're going to get answers to all these questions. And, and that's going to conclude the questions. What happens to the children now? Uh, they have questions for Dr. Grant? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Grant. Mrs. Von Sabering. First of all, I mean, you described the malnutrition of these children. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? I wasn't speaking about the malnutrition of these children in particular, but just in general, children who have been malnourished over a prolonged period of time. They, of course, will have growth stunting. They will have um, uh, nutritional deficiencies. Uh, they can uh, suffer complications if you try to uh, feed them uh, too quickly, so it requires close monitoring when introducing proper nutrition to these kids. I'm not ta talking specifically about these kids. I'm speaking in general. Yeah. So in general, if you're, if you're dealing with <coughs> children or people who've been malnourished, for that stunting of growth, this would be something that would have to happen over years? Over a prolonged period prolonged of time, period yes. Of time. So, physically and psychologically. Pardon uh, me? For someone in this kind of situation, what's, generally speaking, what's ahead for them uh, medically, physically, and psychologically? Well, you can imagine the post-traumatic stress disorder if you've been de deprived of uh, nutrition for a prolonged period of time. If, uh, I, I don't know anything about the history, but uh, if you've been deprived of normal childhood activities, normal interactions, and uh, the people who should have been providing for you have failed to do so. That is going to cause some psychological damage. Doctor, did, Doctor. You, did you treat the children? I just want to. I have not treated the children. Role. I'm a child abuse pediatrician at okay. Riverside University so what sort Health of System. Things are they are uh, someone in this situation? Are they going to have to go through in the future to, to get well physically and emotionally? Um, well, they will require acute stabilization and addressing any type of under, underlying medical uh, needs or concerns that they have. Uh, the psychological uh, support is going to be ongoing and long term. Doctor, I know you can't talk specifically about this case, but in, generally, in cases like this, why do parents do this to their kids? I have no idea. I don't know. Doctor, a psychological issue? Yeah. Is there a case study that you can there are lots of cases <coughs> where parents have failed to uh, meet the needs of their children to varying degrees. It's on a continuum. But as to why uh, parents do this, I don't, I don't know. Dr. Grant, when children are abused in this way and they suffer physical and psychological torture, when they are malnourished over a period of years, is there any hope for recovery? Um, I think there's always hope. But you have to imagine that these kids um, are going to need a lot of support. It's not going to be anything that you go to, you know, a few sessions of therapy and you're all better. This is going to be long term and uh, they're going to need support and loving, supportive people in their lives to help them uh, uh, try to achieve any type of normal life. For many years, probably. Yes. For, the, for the adult children, what is the treatment plan for them? And well, what would it be? I'm a pediatrician, so I don't speak on adults. Can we ask Dr. Susan, Dr. maybe? Susan, Susan may did we you, ask? Did you ever investigate any anything at that home? So, Did your agency, <clears throat> were they ever, did they ever send anyone out? So because this is an active investigation, we cannot discuss the details, but I can say that the call that we received through 911 and the cross report from the Sheriff's Department was the first opportunity we had to intervene. Susan, yeah, this isn't the first time that we've heard stories of people being held against their will, either by strangers or by family members. Uh, if you could send a message to either either the public or obviously people who are going to be watching this, who may be, may be doing this to, the, to their own family, what would that message be? 
Well, I would encourage anyone um, to seek assistance because there's a number of different resources available that we can provide either through our agency or through a number of community providers uh, to address any of the stresses that may exist in the family that would precipitate this kind of uh, abuse or neglect. Um, but I also want to re restate that it's so important for the community to help us be the eyes and ears to these situations and help bring uh, this to our attention. Susan, can you, girl, can you please talk? as we've been saying, can you talk about what courage it took on her part to do what she did? You've dealt with, I mean, maybe not identical cases, but, but similar cases. Well, I would reiterate uh, what the captain has said, that it was an immense courage on her part to, to take this action, and we're so grateful that she was able to make contact with law enforcement and give us this opportunity. And Is Susan, can I ask, some please? Some of the children will go to live with the family. It would be our practice to try to identify potential relatives um, who would be familiar with the family and be in a position to provide care. They would be subject to all kinds of background investigations as well in terms of making sure that they're suitable and stable. And that leads to my question. Have any family members come forward? And can you just tell us, you spoke about seeking a court order. What happens next? So in terms of the details of the investigation, that's really something that we're um, immersed in at the moment, not really able to speak to in detail. Um, in terms of the court process, we would be um, going before the juvenile court as well as potentially probate court um, in order to seek authorization to have oversight of the minor children and uh, the public guardian would have uh, potential oversight of the adult children if that's warranted. Susan, based on your investigation right now, um, as far as the adults are concerned, can you tell us whether those adults have been submitted to the same type of abuse since they were children? At this stage of the investigation, I don't think we have enough information to know how long any of the children have been subjected to this, but as has been indicated, um, their condition indicates that it has been a prolonged period of time. Is this their biological or their biological children? I mean, do they just get turned out into the into society, you know, after leaving living with the shelter for the rest of their life? Is that what society does? Well, I mean, I would think that they would have some sort of treatment that would be more appropriate for them. What what's what's ahead for them? At this point, we will be doing a full assessment with medical professionals to help us better understand the needs of the adults as well as the children, uh, the minor children, and. We'll be prepared to provide uh, supportive services as well as engage other um, and agencies in assisting these individuals to help Susan, them be stable. Susan, the, um, David Turpin ran something called the Sandcastle School. Uh, it was registered in the state. Do representatives of the state ever go visit these schools? Very so, private schools, are they supposed to? with regard to that, that is completely outside of the purview of our agency, and I can't really speak to that. Well, a lot of the neighbors feel like they, they wish they could have done something. Is there anything your agency or any other public agency could have done or anyone could have done to, to stop this? I, I think the first and foremost consideration is for the public to call our hotline or call law enforcement to let us know that there are any concerns of potential abuse or neglect. That would give us the first opportunity to investigate and determine whether intervention is appropriate and necessary. And General, besides, besides what's happened with uh, the alleged torture, the starvation, and, and some of the psychological difficulties, is there any evidence of any other physical or mental handicaps with any of these children that may have happened before um, the allegations of torture, et cetera? So due to confidentiality, we wouldn't be in a position to share any of that information. And even at this early stage of the investigation, this is still information we're gathering. Are, are have any family members come forward? Have any family members come forward? Not at this time. Are, Thank you. Answer a question? Sure. Uh, the, the people who have examined uh, these children uh, who are older than they uh, appear, what conclusions have they reached about how they were raised? Um, I really can't comment on that. It's you know we're, we we have to really at this point in time respect their privacy. Um, you know the law is very prescriptive about that, so we're we're not going to talk about their health care as far as what's going on. How does your staff feel about seeing people in this 
condition and, and how unusual a case is that for you guys? I've been a CEO for a long time. I've been in healthcare for a long time. I've never seen this. Um, and uh, I, the way my staff has responded, uh, uh, I think they were horrified. I think they are uh, uh, very uh, focused on uh, improving the quality of their existence um, and doing their jobs, which is uh, to make their lives better now. Is there a, just a general question about uh, children who are in these kinds of situations and young adults, and Dr. Grant or Captain Fellows, if you want to then feel free. How hard is it for children who have been subjected to this kind of physical and psychological torture over a prolonged period of time to break away like this 17-year-old girl did and essentially, you know, tell everything to authorities and turn their parents in? Well, I'm not the person to answer that. I've never seen it before, but I'm sure it was pretty difficult, and I'm sure there was a lot of trauma that went along with that. Mark, was it communicated, communicated to you from your staff that there may be a message that the children wanted to help? Clearly, they know what's going on now. They've been there long enough. Enough folks have talked to them. Is there something they want people to know? No, not at this point. We're, we're not sharing that. It's an, it's an active investigation, so any information that the that the, the uh, Patients are giving so to our physicians. More about relief or whatever. Just a, a sense of, of safety now. Uh, no, the, I think they, they they are safe right now. I think they feel safe. I can share that with you. They are um, interacting with our staff. Um, I think they're in a better place right now. At least that's my personal sure opinion. Are they together? Are they in the same place? Or they're or all they together. Sir, have just they expressed? Opinion, <coughs> um, how is it possible that, that you know, parents can get away with doing this with their children for such a long time, and 13 of them. It's not just one kid, it's 13. I can't answer that. Wait, have they expressed this? You mean the ones who are under 18 and the adults are just the adults? Right. I, I have, I have uh, five females and two males, and they're all together. And they are the ones who are over 18? These are the 18 to 29-year-olds. In the okay. same room, so or does that mean all together? Okay. We have a, uh, an area of the hospital that we've secured. Uh, it's a patient care area. We've secured it with, we have security on it. We have uh, certain nurses that are working with the staff. Um, they're in a very safe place and they're together, which we think is appropriate. Right. Have any of the Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the last question. How long do you expect them to be there? And have any of them desire or express the desire to be reconnected with their parents? Uh, I can't answer that. I think it's part of the investigation. We're not sharing that information. Um, they'll be there as long as the social services and adult protective services believe that they should be there, <clears throat> as well as the medical care that they need is is um, continuing. Captain, I have just one more question. Captain? Thank you guys for coming. Captain, Dr. Grant? Dr. Grant? Dr. Grant? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. This concludes our press conference. So after, after this, we'll, we'll coordinate outside. Thank you.